Um, hello, good morning or good afternoon, uh, wherever you're tuning in from, and welcome to the Foresight Democracy uh, Innovation and Demographic Census Processes uh, webinar episode. Um, like to thank everyone for being here. Uh, we'd like to thank our our supporters, Minsight, uh, for, for supporting this event, and uh, all our panelists are, are ready to go. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, we're just going to wait a moment or so uh, just for uh, more people to enter the platform uh, and then we will start the day. So um, just hang on a moment and we'll start shortly. Okay, well, thank you again for everyone for being here. Um, as mentioned, today's subject matter is innovation in demographic census processes. Um, the yeah, innovation has always been at the heart of collecting, analyzing, and disseminating statistics uh, about our country's economy, society, and population. And as you, everyone probably here is aware, uh, statistical institutions continue to harness adapt and uh, develop uh, innovation to support their uh, demographic census processes. Um, and so, so today we will be covering uh, different aspects of this, starting uh, with our first panel discussion, uh, looking at feasibility of innovation within demographic census process and overcoming the main obstacles. Um, then we will be looking at combining census implementation with technology. Uh, and then we have a uh, a presentation uh, from Julia Pecci Lopez uh, looking at the future of statistics and the one site uh, democracy census. Um, just to let everyone know, this event is being recorded. So if you don't manage to remain here for the full uh, two hours, we will distribute the link to watch the event uh, this afternoon or later today. Um, I'd also like to draw everyone's attention to the Q&A. Uh, button. Uh, please, throughout, uh, feel free to submit questions uh, during any of the panel discussions that we have, uh, and our panelists will be more than happy to answer. We want to make this as interactive as possible, so you can also upvote your favourite questions if you don't want to submit one yourself, uh, but like I said, you know, please, please, please submit questions and we'll try and get through uh, as many of them as possible. So moving into our first panel discussion of the day, uh, this is a pre-recorded uh, panel uh, due to the time zones. Uh, we have Luca Di Gennaro Splendore, uh, Statistics and Data Analysis Offer, Officer at UNHCR. We also have Javier Carranza Tresoldi, um, a geodata scientist of GeoCensus. Um, and as mentioned, they will be discussing uh, feasibility of innovation within demographic census process and overcoming the main obstacles. Um, so I will just uh, share their video of everyone and uh, everyone can enjoy. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, thank you to uh, Julia Pecci. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she can be with us uh, at the moment. I am uh, Luca Di Gennaro Splendore. Um, I work in uh, UN uh, Refugee. Uh, I am a, a statistician. I worked uh, in the university, in the National uh, Statistical Office and uh, uh, private company. 
Um, and, uh, with us, there is uh, Javier uh, Caranza of uh, uh, Geocons. Uh, Javier, uh, you, can say, uh, you want to say two words about you? Yeah, thank you very much, Luca. I'm very glad to participate in this in this webinar and, and, and the context of the event. Um, myself, I'm Javier Carranza Torres. I direct uh, Fundación Geocensos, that would be a foundation based in headquarters in Bogota that has an outreach to the region of Latin America, mostly Central America and South America. We work as a civil society within a statistical and also census projects, that's hence the name of Geocensus, together with National Statistical Office. And we believe that collaboration in data is possible. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. First of all, uh, I must say that the view expressed in this uh, um, seminar are, are just uh, personal. They don't involve uh, UN refugee and uh, other uh, um, institution and company uh, I work uh, on. Uh, here, uh, the, the idea is uh, to speak a little bit about uh, census and about uh, stat official uh, uh, statistics. Uh, especially we are uh, in the moment, uh, unfortunately, uh, thanks to the COVID, um, all the censor um, uh, in the most of the country are uh, postponed uh, about one year, two years, or um, we don't know uh, um, how, uh, when. Um, uh, Javier, I, I have a question. Uh, what do you think about this uh, postponement? Uh, what uh, um, are the, um, the possibility of uh, um, improvement in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, census? And also. Um, uh, what uh, um, uh, I think you write a, an article also uh, on that, on the, uh, how the civil uh, society uh, can uh, formulate and can audit uh, census and uh, official statistics. Yeah, sure. That's a great and probably long question, Luca, but I'll try to address it by part. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree with your general idea that, that uh, probably the COVID has been a blessing in disguise for all the national statistical offices and generally speaking for the statistical system, just because the digital transformation is impacting in every aspect of the statistical process is not only collection, but also the analysis and the consensus given for that. In that regard, what, what uh, I see uh, from Geocensus Foundation is that probably uh, the best improvements and maybe innovations that we are seeing in a general span of, of, of initiatives in national statistical offices are that the data collection are evolving from a one-to-one -one survey to more digital and uh, telephone-based uh, surveys, which I think is already an improvement because this was mostly rejected and resisted by many governments, not only national statistical offices. This is for one side. And for the other side, in those other stages where we speak about analysis and also about dissemination, I think also COVID and the needs that hobbies have bring to us has created a culture of digitalization and also of exchange of data in a more open format. I'm not saying that open data are more available right now. This is what we really advocate from Geocensus, that data are more open. But what I'm saying is that probably having more digital tools would allow to, for governments to understand how is the logic of this. I wonder that from your side, uh, maybe this can impact uh, the situation from refugees and displaced people in the countries, mostly considering the more 
possibility and the possibilities that the internet brings it's on your side. Would you tell us? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, we we experiment that uh, this uh, delay. Uh, I am uh, in Americas. Uh, this delay um, um, give the, the the chance to some national statistical office, some census to uh, introduce uh, uh, some question on uh, uh, refugee and uh, displaced uh, person. Of course, uh, these uh, statistics are very uh, complex, um, especially for uh, internal uh, displaced uh, people, because it's uh, uh, very difficult uh, to uh, catch uh, them. But uh, uh, generally speaking, unfortunately, um, national statistical offices, they don't produce uh, statistics in uh, refugee and uh, um, uh, internally uh, displaced uh, people. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, uh, it's crucial the, the work of a National Statistical Office in these statistics and uh, other uh, statistics, because uh, we need uh, to fully understand uh, that the National Stat Statistical Office is, uh, uh, is part of the state, is a body of the state that uh, uh, theoretically is completely independent uh, from uh, the government. Then all uh, the official uh, statistics, uh, they should be independent uh, from uh, uh, election, uh, independent uh, from uh, the policy. Also, the, the National Statistical Office, they uh, don't have to um, uh, to monitor uh, policy, they um, they need uh, to do the proper job, the the statistics according with a calendar that is uh, made two years in advance. To don't have any uh, conflict with um, election day or uh, other stuff, because uh, is a, a job on. Uh, the main uh, social uh, economic variable um, independent from other um, uh, variable. In this sense also, uh, now we see that the National Statistical Office are not involved in COVID uh, statistics. This is, uh, should be uh, maybe uh, fixed uh, uh, soon. Also, because uh, the finality of uh, the aim of the National Statistical Office is uh, to produce information. There is no other information. And then the census that is uh, every 10 years, uh, or there is um, something uh, every uh, five years also, that uh, maybe uh, we don't know. The census is made every 10 years all over the world. And the the, the uh, some um, the most of the questions are the same all over the world. Uh, it's made the the first week of November when the years finish for zero for one. Uh, these are uh, the framework where we can uh, produce uh, more uh, statistics. Uh, and then now we, we see many innovation in the census. There, there are also some countries that they do uh, basically uh, mm, continuous census. It's not every 10 years, but uh, thanks to uh, administrative data, they have uh, um, a continuous census uh, 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 update uh, every, uh, uh, every uh, time, every uh, then I don't know. Tell me, uh, Javier. Yeah, if you allow me, I sort of defer with you, but not totally regarding the role about national statistic offices being exclusively a producer of data. That is to say, with the time being, and also probably because uh, of, of the undercomings so of the COVID impacts, we are seeing some sort of, of diffuse lines between 
the producer and the users of information. Mostly, probably, or maybe uh, explainably, because people are not only eager to know stuff, but also to tell stuff from their side. At least, is, at least this is what we see from the side of the geospatial data, where we would really like to share data sets and geospatial data sets from governments and specifically from, from na national geospatial information agencies that are linked also to, to national statistical offices. But also we would like to provide our own data. And this is a discussion that should be open within uh, the ecosystem. Uh, how long or how much it will take until national statistical offices could be transformed, not only as producers of data, but also as stewardships of data, certifi certifiers of data, and also users of data officially, because up to now many data are used by national statistical offices, but they are not uh, disclosed as so, as such, and uh, and probably this is a very important point regarding the consensus we need within all the stakeholders. You on your side from from an international organization will be sharing data regarding uh, refugees and also issues related to displaced people and other indicators and maybe SDGs related to, to the indicators that national statistical offices could be using and also co-producing. And also the civil society, the academia, the private sector will be needing more and more data from different sides of government that need to be standardized and need to be you know, formalized and, and, and homogenized so that everyone can share a proper knowledge of what reality is. So I would agree in part that yeah, maybe we, we need more, more commitment from national statistical offices to share not only data, but also to share the openness of collaborating. But also we will need to empower those stakeholders that are behind the scenes producing and also using data so that we can do something together. A specific solution or a specific issue that I would like to address with you and ask for your ideas is regarding how could those new questions for the server questionnaire for next censuses that probably be developing in these months in many national statistical offices could be co-created and co-produced together with other stakeholders. How, 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 how much do you see this could be done or how do you see this possibility? Uh, of course, it's very interesting. Uh question about question and of course um, uh, uh, as we we know um, um, the years before uh, a census uh, there is uh, an incredible uh, pressure on the national statistical office to produce to introduce question uh, about uh, uh, everything of course uh, the the ultimate uh, responsibility is uh, um, if a question is or not in a census should be only uh, a decision of uh, uh, the national statistical office there are some questions that, that uh, for the nature uh, of the question they don't fit on the uh, on the census uh, and also uh, we cannot have uh, Already the census is very big. We cannot have a, a, um, uh, enormous uh, census because we know that this will be uh, against uh, uh, the census. I think uh, we need uh, uh, to found uh, always a balance. We need to involve the, the community we need to involve uh, the, the foundation, the, um, the um, non-profit organization. Uh, yes, it should be a, democra a, democra a democratic, um, let's say, uh, debate on that. But of course, uh, the last word uh, need to be 
from uh, the National Statistical Office in uh, uh, really independent uh, and uh, technical uh, way to uh, address uh, the issue of how many question and uh, which question uh, they need uh, to be uh, in the in the census. I, I want, uh, uh, if you agree, uh, to uh, address uh, other. Uh, we have uh, uh, another ten minute, uh, uh, maybe fifteen minute. Well, I want to speak uh, to you with you, Javier, about um, from some way uh, to what you mentioned before, administrative data and uh, and uh, 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 census, and uh, uh, also to um, address the issue of uh, uh, that is uh, connected uh, the aim of uh, uh, producing uh, statistics uh, from the National Statistical Office. Yeah, I mean, yes, uh, administrative data are important, are uh, sometimes are, are crucial. Of course, we need to um, to use uh, uh, always. We, we need to try always uh, to use more administrative data because our uh, cheap and uh, also our um, important uh, data. At the same time, uh, the, the aim of the administrative data is completely different from the aim uh, of, uh, um, of the statistical uh, purpose to produce uh, data. Uh, you want to add uh, uh, something uh, on that? Yeah, what, what, what we should try to exchange or to, or to collaborate around that, I guess, with governments, uh, is not the side, of course, of the collection of those administrative data. That is to say, administrative data are always referred as, as, as a component that could complement and could be used as an input to the official statistics, and that should be used because of many recent purposes, mostly those related to the government governance and, and, and education and health and, and social security. That's a good practice. And uh, I think those data are, it waits in, in gold. Uh, I mean, they are really valuable data and governments should use it more. What, what we could do from civil society, I guess, is the part not about necessarily the co-production or the co-creation of the data, because those are data that have been already produced, but probably the role of other stakeholders, not only the civil society from the statistical system should be to scrutinize the quality of the data so as to help the national statistical offices to uh, assume a, a stewardship role of, of, of the proper repository of those data and also to find a common language so that other data could be involved, not necessarily uh, considered as statistical inputs, but considered just as data. And this brings us to the last uh, World Development Report from the World Bank, where a global convention of data should be should be concerned or should be organized according to this or international organization so that not only those actors, uh, traditional actors like the government and uh, like national registries and cadastres and also national statistical offices within the, 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 the national statistical system should participate, but also those other actors that probably have something to say and some data to offer and also data to use, including the scrutinization we were speaking. So what I would think about that is that uh, probably we need more standards and more you know, quality certification for those kind of products so that we could speak the same language. I think uh, national statistical offices, at least in South America and probably, of course, Central America and probably some part of North America, 
are not that advanced in their integration together with national statistical office. And in this regard, the national statistical systems are really important to find that consensus, to push it over, and also to go step by step those, you know, statistical integration frameworks that are arising in, in, in many cases uh, proposed, but not only UNHCRHR, but also by UNGIM and other organizations that are speaking properly about how to integrate those. And uh, when it's about integration, we should involve every actor in, in, in the discussion. That's our point of view, and that's our advocacy mostly. It's about participating, not only in statistics, but also in data. Or the I, other I do. I do agree, and uh, I, I think uh, also uh, we spoke um, uh, about that, that uh, uh, regional uh, integration uh, need uh, that we, we, we see in every region in the world, uh, regional in integration need also statistical uh, harmonization. Uh, a little bit, uh, uh, we can see the function of uh, uh, Eurostat. I, I don't know if Eurostat is a national statistical office. Uh, Eurostat depend uh, that, that doesn't produce data, and that depend of uh, um, a commissioner uh, of the, um, the the political governor of uh, European Union. But that, that doesn't matter. They um, uh, help to um harmonize uh, the data uh, over a uh, european country also probably uh, no eurostat but uh, other organization uh, can uh, create uh, can uh, push on uh, uh, the data um, harmonization uh, among uh, country and probably this also can uh, save uh, uh, money some uh, save uh, investment if they can share the technology the expertise and uh, so on and uh, this point um help me to introduce uh, uh, the next point i, I want to uh, speak uh, with you and maybe um, maybe we we are going to um, closing uh, this uh, uh, talk uh, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, other question is uh, the limitations that national statistical office uh, they have because of course uh, we we cannot think to the National Statistical Office of uh, Netherlands. But uh, all over the world, um, the National Statistical Office uh, um, face a different uh, limitation. Uh, sometimes political limitation, they, there is no independence. Sometimes they, uh, they have a, a human uh, resource limitation. They, they don't have enough uh, statistician or they don't have a, a, a resource to uh, invest and uh, to hire um, high-level high statistician, and they have a, a, a economic limitation to uh, produce proper uh, statistics because sometimes uh, uh, produce proper statistics is very expensive, especially for a small. Uh, um uh country a small uh, national uh, statistical uh, office then i think uh, uh, we need to consider uh, what uh, when we speak about national statistical office we need to consider what it is uh, a national statistical office in the reality and what uh, should be a national statistical office because uh, uh, theoretically they, they need to be uh, independent from the government uh, they have a, a proper budget uh, that uh, need um, uh, should be enough to produce a, a statistic all uh, the social economic uh, statistic but in the reality sometimes we uh, unfortunately we have a very uh, uh, poor uh, situation and also uh, in the many country, also in the let's say um, in the uh, most uh, 
uh, important uh, national statistical office. The people uh, don't know what is a national statistical office. So th there is a, um, a, a big uh, ignorance on that. Also, if uh, basically every day, every day there is uh, the national, some data of national statistical office in the newspaper, in the television. But uh, when you ask to the people, what is a national statistical office? Sometimes the, the people, they don't know if it's public, is pri private, uh, uh, what is. And also in the news is never uh, is a, explain what is uh, the National Statistical Office. Sometimes we see the abbreviation uh, in Italy is uh, ISTAT, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Spain is uh, INE, in, uh, in uh, Mexico is uh, INEGI. We see this, uh, uh, this um, uh, abbreviation, and uh, but the, the people, most of the people, they don't know what is uh, the National Statistical Office. And this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, is connected with the limitation because the people, uh, they don't know. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, we don't realize uh, the importance of uh, the National Statistical Office. I see Javier, you laugh, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, this is, uh, um, um, of course, when uh, you speak among statisticians, this seem crazy. How how they don't know what is a national? But uh, ask uh, your brother, your sister, your wife, uh, your uh, kids, uh, your father. They don't know. Uh, people don't know what really is uh, a national statistical office. Uh, the, the importance. Why need the the justice system is independent of the government. The uh, few few. Um, uh, office institution are so independent from the parliament for from the, the government and national statistical office is one of that but we don't understand uh, uh, the importance uh, maybe basically because we don't know yeah from from civil society what we envision is uh, there might be in the near future or in the medium near future many changes probably in the regulations, not only about statistics, but also about data. Uh, we are not saying nothing new. I mean, this is the case of many technological companies that produce and use data for, for their, their profit and that are being questioned right now. And probably this same discussion should be addressed by the public opinion regarding the new role that national statistical offices should have in this new data con context. That is to say, uh, your questions about uh, how people are involved or include in those, uh, you know, efforts and improvement and autonomy decisions regarding statistics, they should be supported probably. Also, national statistical offices should be more supported in fund funding. But I think that. And I don't think we have much time to discuss this, but probably the other participants should have time regarding the cost of national statistical offices. This is a discussion that has not been opened yet. Uh, most of the discussion we hear in the ecosystem, mostly because this is not even a public discussion or debate, as you, as you put it uh, before, is that the cost of the production of statistics may need a revision in the near future so that census are produced in a much more sustainable way. I've been traveling around many countries, mostly Central America, South America, and Africa. And the, the, the typical internal joke that uh, statistical officers and main officers and chief statisticians do when you ask them, when is the next census going to come? They say, here we always say that census are done every 10 years or when there is money. And this presumes some kind of, you know, assumption that uh, the funding should be always available for an autonom autonomical organization that is probably so, but it, 
doesn't mean that they will have that autonomy because if they don't have the fundings or the needed uh, provision of resources, they may not do it. And this has to do with the economic, you know, golden rule that the, that, that the incomes don't, don't, aren't minus than the cost. I mean, that is to say, you have to have not only funding, but you have to be also efficient with the cost. And when we speak about including other stakeholders, we are speaking about including resources to the national statistical system. Model. And this is the kind of things that we should think for the future. Like, you know, finding a global convention on statistics, not only regarding the standards for the production and the use of the data and statistics, but also finding a proper balance between the funding and the cost that this implies to society. So I would say thank you very much to you. <laughs> and I think we are over the time right now. I don't know if you would like to wrap up. You're very good for wrapping up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Javier, uh, for uh, this uh, last answer, uh, for uh, the, uh, the uh, your your time, and um, I think uh, um, this uh, will introduce uh, the the webinar uh, uh, next week. We we recorded that because we are in America and uh, we have um, more than seven hours. Uh, uh, different uh, time uh, was very interesting uh, to discuss with you, uh, Javier Caranza. Uh, always is a pleasure, and uh, thank you to Julia Pecci for the um, invitation, and also to Eric Lewis for uh, uh, the um, technical assistant. And uh, we uh, we are uh, looking forward to see the the webinar uh, recorded uh, the next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if you allow me, I'd like to invite all national statistical officers and also those members from the ecosystem that we are producing together in United Nations and many, many, many other organizations. The World Data Forum that would be taking place if we are lucky with the COVID restrictions in Bern, Switzerland, the next October 5, 6, and 7, if I'm not wrong and uh, I invite you all to participate and to also submit your own proposals. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, to Luca and Javier for that uh, really interesting discussion. I'm sure uh, our panelists and audience members will have uh, some questions or points to make regarding that uh, particular discussion. Um, what I think is best is we introduce the next panel. I introduce uh, our contributors, they introduce themselves, and then the panelists, because I'm sure it'd be interesting uh, for them to respond uh, to some of the comments made in that um, panel discussion, and then we can move in. Uh, to the panel and I think uh, Julia will take over from me uh, as co-moderator in a moment. Um, so I'd just like to introduce uh, the next panel uh, and the panelists. The focus is combining census implementation uh, with technology. Um, we have Julia Pecky Lopez uh, of Minsight, uh, responsible for the one-site census solution um, uh, offering. Um, Julia is, is, will also be co-moderating. We also have Mark Abuabu Dadsi, uh, Director Information Technology Services of the Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, we have Lamin Diba, a Statistician for Coordination, Dissemination and User Needs Analysis uh, from the Gambia Bureau of Statistics. And we also have David Burrigood, a team leader for the population and housing censuses um, at Eurostat. So maybe if I just uh, request uh, each panelist to introduce themselves, uh, just give a one minute background, hand over to Julia, um, and then we can go from there. So, so Julia, would you like to be first in giving your one minute introduction of yourself? Of course. So uh, my name is Julia Pecci. Uh, I'm from Minsight. I'm responsible. I'm what we call a one-site uh, democracy census. 
uh, and leading the technological development of this uh, this product, which is devoted to the to the um, to give solution to the whole cycle of the census, especially the demographic census. Okay, so I, I would like to thanks all the, the, the people, the, the panelists here, all of them, because they are, have been very kind to us at the invitation. And, and we are really, really having a, a very interesting discussion. Uh, just uh, one short thing. Um, I would like to foster here the reflections and ideas about things we need to change, things we lesson we have learned, not only during the COVID, but also until now, so far, and also foster um, vector of innovations, changes in the census processes. I, I would like just to open a space of reflection, no matter if I come from a private company or public, the work uh, should be done between all of us. Thank you. Uh, and Mark, please, could you give a brief introduction? My name is Mark Abuabo Desi. I work with Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, I'm responsible for IT in Statistical Service. Uh, currently, we, are, we, we started our 2021 census. And as you know, because of the COVID, we have to postpone to 2021. We're supposed to have done it in March 2020. So basically, I'm leading the IT team in Ghana. Thank you. And over to you, please, Lamin. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, I am Lamin Diba, principal statistician for planning, monitoring, and uh, user needs analysis. Um, I know the, the designation that you introduced me with, that was up to 2015. I don't know why that's still there anyway. Um, I manage the planning and monitoring of statistical activities um, at the Bureau of Statistics, um, including the surveys and censuses. Um, we are planning for our next census in 2023. We've already held a series of meetings and uh, planning activities being held. So I think this is an opportunity for us to share what we plan to do for the next census. Thank you. Lovely, thank you, Lamin. And, and David? Yes, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is David Thorogood. I'm responsible for the population census. Uh, and since also registering for this event, also I've taken on the role of head of demography and migration at, at Eurostat, which is the uh, statistical office of the European Union. Uh, which is a part of the uh, European Commission. Uh, we're based in Luxembourg. Um, I say taken on the role of these different new areas, and I think it's actually part of, it illustrates part of what is happening in populational statistics in that the census is increasingly less a distinct exercise. It's part of the overall population statistics system. So it made sense, and, well, administratively and in terms of staff to actually combine these, these areas of work. I guess it reflects what is happening uh, in many countries at the moment, with integration of different areas of population statistics. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And over to you, Julia, to lead the discussion. Okay, uh, let me uh, share some slides um, with you. Uh, I'm going to use some very quickly two three slides to to guide my my speech. Uh, <clears throat> so years my history. So years ago, I did not have anything. I did not know anything about censuses and demographic censuses, population, etc. Uh, one day I started to study, it and I discovered. Um, not only the national, of course, I, I know I, I hear before about national statistics institutions, but uh, 
um, I discovered the relevance of a population census. If people really know uh, how important it is to have a, a good uh, demographic census for the country, uh, I think that a lot of things would change. They are really relevant in their life. There is relevance in the demographic uh, way. Uh, you know, a lot of the census is mentioned in a lot of constitutions, uh, books, <laughs> or publications in the world. It takes parts of the constitution, a lot of works. It takes parts on, on the uh, policies uh, and the money people receive, the distribution of the budget, the thousands of things in the life of people. So, so it deserves a, a deep um, reflection on how we are doing statistics. Uh, especially in the population. No? So that from my side, my side is the technological, I'm not polit politician, I'm not, my side is the technological uh, vision of the problem. And, and we are studying, I'm studying, I discovered that maybe we can change some things there are, that really are in our hands to change, at least from the technological point of view. I cannot change some things. I cannot change the political limitation of, uh, of the institution. I cannot change that. I cannot change the legislation, but I can change the technology. I can change the way, the methodologies, the way in which we, 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 we make things, we develop the, the, the data, etc. And I would like to share with you this, this short, short, very short reflection. No? Uh, some of the motivations uh, to, to develop a, a technological product uh, that at least I, I think that it doesn't exist in the, in the world. It's just, uh, there are a lot of software in the world, there are a lot of solutions, uh, but there is not a, just one solution to, to resolve the, the problem of making a statistic every 10 years or every five years or every year even. So from my side, the motivation to, to the fundamentals, to, to things in another way, ways of think, make things, as maybe I, I mentioned here several, very quickly. Um, you really know, all of you really know that the, right now there is no universal or common statistic with no, uh, I'm going to move this, I cannot do it, okay. Uh, we need universal statistics, but uh, from our opinion, from my opinion, uh, there no will be common statistics uh, without common techniques and common methodologies and tools, how do you say, standards. Uh, without comparable statistics, there will be no efficient economical or technical cooperation possible. And here's a key point also, the cooperation between countries, the cooperation between institutions, even inside the countries, the cooperation between private and public sector. We need absolutely reduced costs. Maybe we can, <laughs> some ideas, maybe we can share cost of infrastructure, maybe, which is a, a reducing cost is a basic point of, uh, it's a fundamental, not only for, for new states, for modern states, uh, no, no matter what, what profile of a state is it, or country is it, uh, it's a responsibility also to optimize the cost you have to do a job. Uh, we need also good implementation of capacity buildings, technological and human. Uh, and we, we like to, to, to give, to offer easy tools, not complicated tools, Easy, it's easier to, to, to generate a statistic now. And also a uh, population not only has to know the, the, the importance, the relevance of uh, the statistic that the government is make, it also has been able to know what benefits has from them. And we have to, offer this data, these statistics, not only to make policies, but also to bring richness to the population. 
facilitate the creation of startups, the creation of uh, uh, new ideas, new business model, the attraction of foreign investment, and we can use this data uh, also for that. So there are several reflections. From my point of view, uh, what could be the, the main vector of innovation? Uh, the, the things, the things that um, uh, to take into account because they deserve to be take, taken into account if we want to uh, foster the innovation to change way of things. And it's a, it's a really deep transformation on, on the way we, we generate statistics. Uh, very quickly, because we have a few minutes, uh, they need to optimize cost. Uh, this is, a, this is a, for me, is the basis. Not only, we have to make good the statistic, but optimizing cost. So please analyze the problem, see the main cost um, consuming budget, um, the, the process who consume our budget uh, and change it. Absolutely, we can change. Um, we are facing new technological challenges. Uh, different level depending on the country, the IoT, the big data infrastructure, the, the need of big data technological infrastructure to manage the amount of money, the amount of data, sorry, with less money, with less time, etc. And we, all of us know a lot of national statistic institution with a very obsolete infrastructure. We know, we I'm sure we, we all of us know some examples. Um, the artificial intelligence uh, is, is true, and every time more and more, you know that if you organize data in a determinate way, you make a historic, um, a historical uh, strategy of data, you can maybe improve the way in which algorithms work and optimize processes. We also, uh, so, sorry, um, we also are facing new sources of data, um, the pressure to, to improve the quality of data, uh, to improve uh, to also to determine the quality of data we want. There are a pressure, there are an opportunity of collaboration between public and private companies. Uh, and we discovered this uh, during the pandemic, during the COVID time. We discovered that private companies have better data than national statistics institution. We cannot, we cannot afford that. We cannot. We, the government must have the best data we can possibly have, we can able to have, because it's for the good of the people, the common good of the people. Uh, of course, private company are absolutely um, uh, in the right to, to generate this statistic, the, the new, new, new data, uh, their own data and exploit it. Uh, we have to respect that also. But uh, we can also make agreements and, and talk, um, collaboration ways to channels to, to share this data, uh, to offer for the national benefits, the best data possible. Uh, we also have experimented rapid changes in population. We cannot, you know, we can we cannot um, characterize population right now in the same way that we made ten years ago. Maybe the 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 indicator should be different. The way in which generated should be different. The population needs are different. So. Uh, are we really ready to, to characterize people for the correct point of view right now and maybe in the future? And finally, um, uh, the universal access to statistics. Right now, it's not possible to compare, even sometimes, in, <laughs> as you know, you, you also, I'm sure you know a lot of examples of, of other cases. You know? We can cooperate uh, regionally. We can between foreign countries, um, neighbor countries, uh, and we can improve quality of people if we really cooperate. Um, this is, from my point of view, some vector of innovation. No uh, uh, um, points in which we must reflect. 
because they can help us to improve. It's just my opinion, my personal opinion, and maybe I, I'm wrong in some of them. Uh, just a sentence to reflect on, because I hear this sentence sometimes in some countries. Okay, okay, Julia, if something is working, don't touch it. My system is working, even if it's obsolete. I'm right, it's obsolete, but it's working, so don't touch it. <laughs> so uh, with this sentence, I, I will reflect um, uh, two questions that I, I make myself uh, listen this this uh, is this really working? Do you think that it's really working? Uh, produce some data. It doesn't mean that the data are good at the best. Second, uh, do you really think that people that are changing or touching process traditional processes are not improving the system or improving the, the data? Are you sure? Uh, just some question, and maybe the, the panelists could reflect with me in, around this sentence. Uh, because this sentence stop, block any line of innovation or, or change you can uh, propose. And sometimes it's unfair, but sometimes I, I can do nothing. <laughs> uh, and that's all by now. Uh, so I, I would like to to the to listen the rest of the panelists around these things or, or whatever other things they, they would like to express in, the, in this space. Thank you very much. Uh, so maybe, um, Eric, if you like, we can uh, give the word to Mark, Abu Abu, if you like, or or whatever, voluntary. Yeah, Mark, do you have any uh, comments to make on, on, on some of the points that you made in the, in the, in the speech? Yeah. Yes, what, what, what I want to say is that we've gone through uh, the process from planning, now we are executing the sense of we started doing the housing by identifying the housing and also making sure that we do total coverage and quality. So basically what we're doing now is canvassing the numeration areas and also making sure that we give unique serial numbers on the building. But since I'm focusing on technology, when I have the chance, I will, I will, I will bring out the process that went in, in terms of the population and housing sensors, the role of IT within the sensors. We see uh, on the ground doing the listing, and then next week we will start. Next week we will start uh, the enumeration itself. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. And and David, do you have any comments to make on uh, Judith's speech, or maybe some of Mark's comments? Hello. Hello. Um. Really just, I mean, I think the thing I would focus on very much, um, and I could e expand upon this now or later as you wish, uh, is the massive growth that we've seen in the use of administrative data sources. Um, uh, this has been very, it, it, is making, it has made a huge change and is making a, a huge change to how censuses uh, and the overall data collection process uh, uh, takes place across different European countries. Um, what we've seen, for example, is, I mean, we have 27 EU member states. Um, there are, for the 2021 uh, census exercise, uh, 11 of those member states will use purely administrative data sources and will have no additional contact with the public at all. Uh, and another 11 will be combining administrative data sources with existing uh, uh, sample survey data. 
So really, there's only out of 27 member states, there's really only five which um, use what might be described as a traditional census, uh, where there's a full enumeration. And even among those, um, uh, there's an increasing focus on the use of new data collection methods, uh, and particularly with the pandemic, uh, an increased focus on the use of internet, for example, internet data collection. Um, so in all areas, the census is changing, but the the biggest impact that we've seen, we're seeing in Europe is the, uh, the use of administrative sources. And this is, um, I think it's fair to say that 2021 is probably going to be the last the last time that we have what looks like a, a normal census exercise in Europe, because beyond then the move is towards more a more frequent and continuous data collection, as was mentioned in the first video presentation. Um, would you like me to continue now, or we can do, <laughs> we can continue with the discussion? I think I'll I'll, I'll hand over to the other speakers, and that, that we can continue our discussion in a, uh, shortly. Yeah. Lamin, do you have a, a comment to make on Judith's presentation as well? And then we could move into the, the topics of the panel discussion. Yes, just a very quick one. Um, and that has to do with her last statement where she, she asked, if something is, is, is working, don't touch it. I, I think we will not agree with that statement because um, if it is working, the question is, is it working well? Is it working in accordance with the, with, um, the advancements in um, in technology in the world and you know in the statistical fraternity. So the question there are, there are a lot of questions that, that can be asked about that statement. It is working, but is it working in accordance with what is already? So for me, if it is working, ask a lot of questions around it. Then you can touch it or not touch it. So that is what I want to um, add to that. Yeah, lovely, Lamin. Well, I think we'll stick with you for now, Lamin, on, 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 with the first question um, that we have within the panel discussion. Uh, and it's regarding the opportunities for innovation um, within statistics, within your, your current institution. Uh, do you feel that there is, you know, ways to, you know, expand your innovation uh, to, to support your work? Yes, um, quite certainly. Um, just briefly, let me just quickly say this. Um, as part of the innovations, of course, um, different countries are at different levels in terms of their production of statistics. And most importantly, when it comes to censuses, um, especially comparing the, the, the first world and the, the third world countries. Uh, and even within the third world countries, we have different, we are at different levels. Um, the, as in preparation for the census 2020, 2023, we have um, at least tried to develop a data quality framework, which we never had um, for many, many decades, um, at least to, 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 to make sure so we have a framework in place to do to, for the data quality improvement. We also have developed what is called the data dissemination um, um, scheme to be, to, to be able to have timely data um, access to people as well as wider coverage in terms of the, um, the giving out the data. But in terms of the plans, um, we want to do a digital census this time around. All the six censuses that we have conducted since 1963, we've been doing paper-based data, data collection. And we want to do the digital data collection this time around for the, for the census. And uh, that that is to improve the timeliness of the data. We also want to improve the quality of the data. And uh, we want to make sure we also improve on the, the data processing. We all know very well that um, census data processing takes time, especially in Africa. Sometimes you, it takes almost four, five, six, seven years before the data can be processed and, and, and disseminated because it, we are doing with paper. But now we want to do it um, with, with um, tablets or, or, or mobile phones, in which, in which case the quality of the data will be improved, the data access and processing will be improved, and data dissemination, the, the data availability to, to the people will also be improved. And then we also want to upgrade the GIS system such so that, um, because I think we, 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 we saw that with the South African census, what they it, what it do is the interviewers will only be able to interview when they are in the right location, like the, when they are in the EA itself, that is when the application will be active. So they don't have, they don't have any way to cheat. You, you, you know, you have other people who sit, sit somewhere and fill the forms. But this way, the, the, the application is programmed such so that it recognizes the EAs so you have to be in the EA before the application can be active. 
So we want to we want to adopt, adopt that, that innovation as well. And uh, um, if you look at, if you listen to Julia's um, presentation, we want to incorporate this big data, big data system. Uh, here we, we are looking at the CDR, the call data records, um, to complement the census data. Um, we we um, piloted it um, recently with the World Bank um, project. Our initial plan was to measure internal mobility of the of people, but because of the COVID, our dimension changed, and we used the, the CDR data to look um, to look at people's movement and how COVID can be transmitted quickly. So that we want to see how we can use CDR data to complement census data to measure internal mobility, internal movement, internal migration of, of, of the people, because that is only available once after 10 years and people are moving every day. So if you want to wait for every 10 years to be able to um, measure internal mobility, then that is, that is um, absolute, absolute, absolute archaic. And um, we also want to use satellite data um, we yeah. we founded out the opinion of AI, AI um, Google AI Lab in, in in Accra to see if they can if they can help because they had a pilot project with um, um, Uganda Bureau of Statistics and they use the satellite data to to uh, ha make a count of all their houses and compounds to do a complete listing and that that way they estimated the number of people that that can live. In, in, in the communities. They use that data to be able to monitor their sensor, their, their sensor data well as a, control, mm -hmm. uh, as a control measure. So that is also another, another uh, innovation that we want to incorporate. But then um, uh, you, will, you will see that all these things commit, commit a, lot of, a lot of challenge. <laughs> they commit a lot of challenge. And uh, Julia has said it, said it um, Luca also has said it earlier on. The most Prominent challenge that we have is financial. Mm. Oh, and then I and then I'm, I'm so every, 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 everywhere in, in Africa you you go this is this is the one challenge. In the Gambia is, is peculiar because ninety percent of the activities, direct activities in this country are funded exclusively by the development partners. Government does not adequately fund activities activities in this in this country. Now. The problem here will be if you want to go into all these things, who funds it? Where does the funds come from? And then the development partners don't have um, money lying down their feet to be able to fund it, these things. So there's, there have to be government commitment. Then we have, we have what is called the technical, the technical bit of it. Because if you want to uh, um, change, if you want to adapt to the, the new system, then you have to have the internal capacity for, um, to be able to um, adopt new new technologies and new system like the the big data technology, data science um, 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 background, we need all those things. So that is also um, one thing that is also lacking. Then we have um, ethical issues because things like CDR data, there are ethical issues around it. Before you can use call the records of people. You have to navigate the ethical uh, ethical issues because of what um, the identifiers. You have the legal you have the legal um, legal issues that we have to navigate around because in tribal countries most of the legal instruments that statistical offices have that is the, the act on the, or, or whatever they are they are all in all the all the all the legal in, um, 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 instruments that were not de developed to adapt to changes that will happen. Um, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. And that is what is affecting most of countries now. As a result, a lot of countries are now revising their acts to be able to incorporate the new changes that are happening. But then, unless we navigate around the changes and make, make our legal instruments so flexible to be able to adapt, we have those challenges as well. Um, um, infrastructure, infrastructure wise, of course, we, you know, when you adapt these new technologies, um, um, big data and, 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 and other things, you have a lot of infrastructural shift that you have to do. You, you have to make to be able to incorporate the new the new technologies. So, these are the things that I just want to share when it comes to our preparations for the census. Lovely, I mean, I could see Julia nodding quite a lot throughout 
Um, yes, I, I hear a lot of interesting things, um, and I'm very, very happy to hear that. So I, I would like to launch a question to to our three panelists right now uh, regarding uh, some ideas of lamin. Um, first, okay, I, I made two questions, and then you, I, I give you the word. Uh, two questions. First, I would like to know, uh, just for for others to learn. Uh, what has been the main um, blocking point you have been facing during the last years trying to, to change the way of making demographic census? And how did you overcome this blocking point? The second question, do you think it is possible uh, to get a way in, uh, to find a way in which uh, statistical data could um, uh, bring back some benefits, um, maybe the national institutes, institutions of the statistics could be independent from the point of view of the financing. Uh, could be financing independent, maybe if we can find new business model, make uh, a ways to, I, I don't like the, the, the word, but to monetize statistics or make new lines to, to auto-financing the next census. I don't know if I express myself clearly. <laughs> okay, can I come in? Yes, please, Mark. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, the our terms of the planning process, we started at uh, 2015. But we were looking at budget availability and also how we can approach. So in IT side, we map the value chain. The value chain is the resources, the capacity, and availability of technology within the country. So what we, we came up is that you're looking at this first step, how to recruit, how to get the people on the field, the data collection and security of the census data. So what we decided is to build an in-house recruitment application that we call it uh, Enumerators Bureau, where the intent or the objective is that we're going to have a pool of enumerators or field officers, where some will be enumerators, supervisors, trainers, and other resources. So that's what we did. And then we were able to recruit. Application was about 350,000. We needed about 80,000 people to be trained and then later used about 63,000 for the first work. So as we did that, we also looked at how can we manage the, uh, the logistics. So we also did an in-house application for logistics, that's it. The procurement, warehouse, transport, and finance. So that one, we have seen that we were having challenges of supply of the tablet. So we are using tablets, the data collection, which we were buying about 75,000 tablets. So during that process, COVID, in and, and couldn't get the delivery of time. But apparently, we were able to get about 76,000 that we see now. But the downside is that since we, we couldn't do the proper due diligence, so whilst in the field, you have the complaint of. Uh, Function of some of the tablets that we have. So that is what is also impeding the progress. But majority of the tablets are functioning well. We tablet for the package in terms of GIS of the EEs and also the description of the EA point of interest and the application of the if they were typing on the tablet and then synchronized to a central piece and then editing to place and whatever. But the most challenging aspect is the internet connectivity. Because what we do
doing now is that it's a red time when you collect the data at a certain point, you have to synchronize to a central repository. And most places that they've got, either there's the presence of internet, but it's not the authority. So getting the data synchronized has become challenging. And then also, uh, incident like damages of the tablet, like that accidentally falling or state on it and whatever. So we have having that kind of incident. And also test because of the tablet, there are a lot of also uh, stolen tablets and things. So when you plans of the the device that you're going to use for the data collection. And also as my friend said that the geofencing, if you are not careful, you also have a problem, especially areas where there is no connectivity. So the geofencing use satellites and uh, Google Maps. So if there's no connectivity, communication will be a, so what we are doing now is that we have interactive maps that we are using is offline that navigates you around your boundary within the E. So when you go off, it will just indicate that you are off, but it doesn't depend on uh, any satellite or internet. So basically that is what we do it. And then in terms of the sensors, our aim is quality and total coverage. So we have a satellite imagery that we are, is overlay with the data we are collecting now. So you have the structures and things. So it's a red time. Any data that comes also point a structure on the satellite image. So at the end of the day, you can know a particular enumerator progress. And if there is any gap that you can see on the on the board, that's board, you can prompt the supervisor or the enumerator to be able to go back and then do the right thing. So for now, that is what we're doing now. But we have other layers, for instance, in terms of data quality, we have data quality management team that all the data that are being sent to the cloud, they also assess and make sure that consistency, there is no kind of uh, gap or Should we move the question on to David um, to give a response? Thank you, Mark. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to probably highlight what you mentioned, the block to innovation. Uh, and there's possibly a, hit, a sort of hidden quality issue, which we've come across in the use of administrative sources. Uh, and that relates to the statistical definitions which are used in the census. Hello. Um, 
the hello uh, hello mark we I, can hardly hear my, you my connection dropped yes yes i'm sorry uh, I, I, I would propose maybe you can uh, share with us some tests some document in which you express what you are saying and we can share it with the audience so because okay. we, we cannot hear you very well <laughs> okay for now I'm, I'm 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 in the field my my strategy i have a it strategy that and they also slide that Oh, great. Uh -huh. Great. You can send send it to Eric and Eric can distribute it between Yes, the... I'll, I'll do that. OK. But, so, but so, what I will say is that in terms of security, in terms of security, we are not using public internet. It's a private uh, a APN, it's access, access uh, uh, point network, APN. So, that one is private, so it's like you are in your local area network, so nobody sees whatever activities that you do. So that is one of the ways we use for data protection to just mm -hmm. not allow public to other eavesdrop and whatever. So that is where I ended. And if there is any further questions, but we need to be careful in terms of uh, geofence. Your friends say has an issue with connectivity. Uh -huh. You are absolutely right. Uh, thank you for your contribution, Mark. Uh, David, please excuse us. <laughs> uh, can, can you go ahead and explain your, your point of view? Okay, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so as I say, that, that, that what we found is that there's a, possibly a hidden quality problem with the use of administrative sources relating to the applicability of statistical definitions. Um, in Eurostat, we collect and harmonize data from the National Statistical Institute. Um, they must be compiled by very strictly and legally defined definitions. Um, so the member states are legally legally bound to meet the apply particular definitions for the data which they send to us. But for the for population statistics generally, clearly the key thing is the population base and who 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 are we counting? Who lives in this area that we count? Uh, and the United Nations recommendations are based on. Uh, a definition based on, on usual residence. So a person is counted in the place, essentially they're counted in the place where they normally sleep. Um, and that's their, that's their address, that's their regional country of residence. And regardless if they're away for a short time or somewhere else for a short time. Um, and then this is either that they are there for, uh, there's a time definition, so they've either been there for 12 months or more, or they've arrived more recently, but they will intend to stay there for 12 months. And this is something which is easy to find out from a census because you can ask people, if there's any doubt, you can ask a question about how long have you lived here? Um, do, you, will you plan, do you plan to stay here for longer? With administrative data, often this information doesn't exist. Uh, you may not even know where the person really, really does live. You just have their registered address, which may not be where they really spend their time. Um, and this is something which has affected quite fundamentally some of the some of the statistics and it calls into question whether the statistical definitions that we have are will remain appropriate for the use of administrative sources in the future um, and there are similar questions to do with how you define a household for example um, which are all dependent on information which you can get easily from a conventional or a traditional census it is very hard from an administrative source um, and the difficulty is that, that definitions are very hard to change because they're based on international recommendations. Um, and even if there can be agreement on the need for change, it's very hard to reach agreement on what the new definition should be. Um, and this, this is a potential internationally and over time, it is a, compar a comparability problem for uh, population statistics, which I think is still something that we're addressing now. Okay, very interesting. And from your personal point of view, uh, do you think that um, uh, there are there ways to to auto financing the national uh, institutions of the statistics? 
Okay, possibly my approach is a bit purist on this, but um, <laughs> generally, I mean, if you look at the uh, international codes of practice for official statistics, the, there's the general view that, uh, that statistics are a public, a public good, um, and there needs to be a quality of access. So I'm a little uncomfortable with the idea that if you pay more money, you could get better statistics or something like, or something like that. <laughs> Um, but it's, I, I realise that's a, a bit of a purist approach. So. Good point. <laughs> it, may, it may be need to be considered in some cases, yes. Okay, okay. And Lamin, please, what do you think about these two questions, the, the blocking points and how to overcome, and then the, the auto-financing issue? Yeah, you, the question on the main blocking um, point regarding uh, the financing is 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 for for me. Uh, of course, I'll 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 totally agree with David on the issue of statistics being public good, and it's public funds that that are expected to be to be used to collect the data. That is why it is regarded as public good. Um, if countries or governments, especially in third world countries, understand it that way, then they should be able to adequately allocate. Um, um funds to collect that data for public consumption unfortunately a lot of countries are not doing that um the key point is, is, is in the gambia the census in the gambia here um is mainly supported by unfpa and i think over over the years the U, the, the un agency had 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 to adjust to the lack of funding um, adequate funding by government to make sure they, they, they provide adequate um, funds to, to bridge the gaps by providing all the infrastructure, um, even, even the vehicles that, that we, we currently have. I, I think, except, except the two that the SG and the WDSG um, drive, every, 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 every other vehicle was bought by UNFPA. The GIS materials are, are bought by um, UNFPA. So UNFPA had to adjust to the, the if, the lack of participation of government fully to, to fund the studies office. And then looking at all the other, so other, other activities that we conduct, like the, the main service, poverty service, are funded by World Bank and, and, and UNDP. The, the, health, the health service are funded by UNICEF and UNFPA. So it's all, it's, it's, it's like, it's the UN agencies that are funding this. So the blocking point is government's, lack of government's commitment to it. And the solution, the, the primary solution lies in governments um, reorienting themselves to creating the adequate funds for statistical development. And we developed uh, what is called the NSDS. And the NSDS is fully costed and submitted for funding. We are in the fourth year of implementation of the NSDS. Until, until now, government has allocated $1 for the implementation of that. All the activities that we have implemented from the NSDS are, are funded by the UN system. So this is where we have a problem. So the blocking point is lack of commitment from government's own side to make sure the statistics um, office is independently funded. Good, very, very good reflection. Yes, and very good idea. Very interesting. Uh, so Eric, I think that we finished the time. Um, maybe I would like to share with you some other ideas in the slide, um, but uh, I don't know if we can finish finish just with a motivational video, maybe to dream about a, um, a, a unique solution for demographic census processes that could help us to reduce costs, to be economically independent, to make harmonized data, standardized processes and data, etc. cetera, uh, to share data between countries, uh, et cetera. Just to, to make a, um, a dream, we can end with this video, if you like. It's not, uh, it's just to give um, some ideas. No? I would like to share with you. And also, I, I finally, just to end, uh, finally thank you again and again, uh, the contribution of all the panelists. Um, I, I wait for sure the, the contribution in paper from Mark, because we, we need some part of, the, of his speech. And, and also has to be taken into consideration. So I, I would like to share with you some this video very quickly. If I ah, here.
Uh, give, give me one second because it, one second, please. Excuse me. Sharing again. Can you hear my, my screen? Can you see my screen, sorry? No, we, we can't no, see. It. Not at all. Uh, Just when you share, you, Julia, there may be also a button at the bottom that you need to check for the sound to be shared. So just double check. Uh, yes, give me, I don't, here, here we are. Um, compare different times. No, um, no, I, mean, I surrender. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want you to lose time with me. Uh, so, from my point of view, we can finish the the webinar. Uh, again, thank you, and let's work together. Also, I, I propose to work together to to improve things in, in the demographic censuses. And, and, I come with you and, and you can come with us and with other stakeholders to, to do it. Okay. Thank you very much for your opinions. Lovely. And uh, any final words from, from our speakers, starting with Lamin? Um, I think what I would, what I would, what I would um, add to all this is to collaborate more and try to share ideas uh, regarding how to overcome um, these challenges and how to make things better, um, even if 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 it's going to uh, be a private private government um, partnership, I think some of these things, some of these models can work. Um, we we had a case with the World Bank on the CDR data, where the, where the World Bank had to hire the University of Tokyo to um, give us the technical background and help us analyze the CDR data. So it is a government, a government in initiative funded by World Bank where a private company or a private entity was hired to provide the technical box, um, 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 support to do the necessary analysis of the data because we don't have the, um, the capacity. So this is a model that that can work. And I think if if we have a very good model that we can sell to the development partners and government, we'll, we, we are sort of having a buy-in to, to some of these approaches. Thank you, Lamina. And David? I mean, I can only agree with the last point, really, that uh, the importance of international cooperation and the sharing of ideas and information is, is very important. Um, there's so many ways in which uh, okay, every country is different, but there are very common problems which are, uh, other countries have faced and they have often found solutions for. So there are ways forward with that. The other issue as well is one way that we've seen about the, about the importance of very regular communication from the statistical office to the policymakers, um, not just before the census, but as a continuous process. Because if you're going to ask for money to do something, it's good if there's a history of, them real, of the policymakers realizing the value of what you can give them. Um, and so you can stress to them the cost, the cost of not having a census because population data are um, impact on so many are different areas of policy. Um, and it's a, it's a way of, rather than focusing on how much the census costs, it's, it's how much it, it costs not to have a census. Yeah. Thank you. That's an interesting point, David. And uh, Mark, any final remarks? What, what, what I can also say is that because of the financial constraints that most of the developing countries we have, it's, we can also manage it through early discussion with the government. Because census is done every 10 years, and it's a huge project. So within one or two years, if you want funding, you find it difficult to 
again. But if we can do the proposal as early as possible, at least, we can get something near our budget because the planning is a process. All your resources, like buying of equipment, can be can be done at a particular year, training and all those things. But at the end of the day, you don't put stress on the government budget. So if it, we approach it that way, it, it will help for us to also get something from the government to conduct the census. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark, and uh, thank you to all our contributors today. Thank you to Julia uh, and Minsight, uh, who have been uh, supporting the event and building the focus. So thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, Lamin, thank you to you too. David, thank you uh, for being here as well. Uh, and Mark, uh, thank you so much uh, for your contribution. Uh, thank you to everyone uh, in the audience for being here. Uh, if you've joined late uh, or you want to re-watch the episode, we will share the recordings in a couple of hours. Uh, but on behalf of Foresight Democracy, uh, thank you, everyone. It's been a really interesting discussion, and we hope to see everyone uh, at our next uh, Census Innovation webinar in the future. So thank you, and thank you. Uh, have a lovely day all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Julia. Thank, thank you. you. Mark, thank you. Everyone yeah. else. Goodbye. Bye-bye.